Hey, Sherry, welcome to the show. Thanks all for having me, Frank. Excited to dig into today's exciting topic. It is an exciting topic. And we know that like we've been working on extranets and intranets for a long time, and there's a real difference between the two. Why don't you kind of juxtapose the extranet versus the intranet? So a couple things to kind of think about just from the name itself, the extranet targets an external audience. So it is people outside the organization. They can be your clients, your customers, external vendors, third parties. Um, an intranet is meant more specifically for internal collaborators. When you talk about intranets versus the extranets, they've both been around for a very long period of time, but based on kind of technology technological changes nowadays extranets and internets has both become fairly popular now depending on your type of organization you would either need both or one um, when you talk about an extranet for organizations that have um, a lot of workings with their clients an extranet is helpful to provide a specific platform to share things like requirements, share information on your services, um, provide a space to educate, inform, teach, that sort of information. Mm -hmm. um, it's very important if you want to keep your customers happy, satisfied, and engaged to build a very effective extranet. Um, if your customer is your top priority, an extranet is super important for you. When you talk about the internet again, it's more to keep your internal organization motivated, your staff motivated to ensure internal communications are on point. But whenever it comes to client management, dealing with a particular client, and again, I use the term client fairly smallly, it could be a vendor as well. If you want to work with a vendor, order supplies, things like that, um, having an extra it can be supremely beneficial. Um, the extra also allows you to create kind of your own self-service portals. Um, allowing customers to either top up on their orders, allowing vendors to share information with you. There's a lot that you can do with a very well-built extranet, and that's an option that an internet generally would not provide you. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I mean, I think customer extranets are more important today, and they really fit this model of self-service. Everybody's looking at self-service and they're looking at that in their customer experience models, in their employee experience models. And ultimately the friction that's created by people having to deal with other people, as much as that sounds kind of counterintuitive, is that people want to meet other individuals or they want to engage with your organization on their channel of preference. And self-service and digital is becoming more prevalent. As we talk about a customer extranet, because you, you mentioned like a vendor and channel support as well, but Ultimately, with customers, the cost to acquire a customer is greater than it has ever been. And, and keeping a customer is almost as paramount just from the standpoint that competition is critical. You may not have as much net new business. And so you really need to reduce that level of churn. And a real quick kind of anecdotal story is that, you know, a while back we created an extranet for a client. And it was not just an informational extranet. They had gone through actually a, a series of merger acquisitions. And so they had a whole number of different ERP systems and it was impossible for them to move to a singular ERP system. I mean, it was possible, but time and money and money being probably 30 to $40 million to do it, it wasn't practicable. So what we did was we worked with them to build a normalization of the data for their customers. Cause they had customers that were utilizing, you know, all of these different services across all these different business units and globally as well. And they needed one place to be able to see all of their data. And it was performance data because it was, had to do with repair logistics and they needed to see what was happening, what was trending so that they could make changes in production. So it became really critical. So we built this for the client. And what I really want to underscore here is that the conversation with the client as we got more into the process and finally when it went into production, his thought initially was, this is going to be a great differentiator for us. And they, they are a multi-billion dollar company and the competition that they have, all things being equal was if we were on the same page or at least, you know, competitive around price, um, availability and quality, what would push the deal over into our side in terms of being a benefit in terms of being an advantage and it ended up becoming this extranet was the thing um, because people struggled so much with that data so i think that when we think about intranets 
it seems like it's very much a cost center and it's very much driven in terms of, of being um, kind of like a standard way of, of optimizing the operation. But from a customer perspective, it can be massive in terms of winning new business and keeping that business. Absolutely. Even in your example, the extra net becomes a revenue generator, not a cost center. <laughs> When you have so many disparate systems that don't necessarily talk to each other, the extranet is again super beneficial as it's this one piece of technology you can throw up pretty fast. You kind of talked about low code, no code. You can create this center where you can share simple information. You can share it securely with access tracking, permissions all maintained, and very easily share the kind of information that you want with one customer, with multiple customers, you have kind of all of that flexibility. And as we kind of continue talking about more platform specific things, we learn a little bit more on just how easy it's truly really become to create some of those extra nets as well. Maybe we can uh, take a moment and, and speak to maybe some of the componentized user stories that one can think about when you're envisioning your extranet. And I can think of one like right off the bat, I did mention the fact that, you know, pulling data from a variety of different data sources. So there is this data reporting and analytics componentry that we can bring into the extranet so that when a customer logs in, they're able to see critical, whether it be transactions mm -hmm. or performance metrics that are part of the relationship. But then I think also there's a lot of ways to kick off processes, right? Like in terms of that self-service portal, um, whether it's a request for something or whether it's to start a particular uh, process, um, maybe you can kind of speak to some of those that you come across on a regular. So uh, quite a few that you can kind of think about. Um, the first one that's actually very simple is it's a very easy way to do business. Um, your clients have a need and a requirement, and you need a simple way to address that or share that. The extranet does exactly that. You can create a centralized space where you can have all of your processes built in. Uh, more importantly, that space would be available 24 seven. If someone needed to access it, they could get information any point of the day without any additional cost and more as a convenience to your clients. Uh, you have the ability for your extranets to really serve as a knowledge base. And the knowledge base is an interesting topic because with the way conversational AI is going today, your knowledge bases are actually getting smarter and smarter. Uh, so your customer could come on to the particular extranet for a specific knowledge base related query. Your platform could get smart enough where using different types of AI, it could address the query very effectively, leading to a very satisfied customer. You would also have one space kind of with all of your up-to-date information always, which can be super helpful. Um, with e-commerce, which has become so normalized these days, uh, with an extranet, again, you know, you have very secure transactions available. Um, you have a very comprehensive space to share both product information and to actually see what sort of engagement you're getting on some of these things. And yeah. tracking engagement can be either through analytics like Power BI or tracking a consumer through uh, something like a CDP. And um, lastly, just thinking of the different ways that you can engage with that particular user on an extra app now. This can be through personalization that your tools offer. This can be through uh, live chat, uh, chat bots itself. Um, there are a lot of ways to make that solution very, very engaging for the particular customer. It's lots of benefits. I like the fact that you bring up the knowledge base piece. And I feel that this is something that kind of rolls off the tongue pretty quickly and people can uh, bring that in and they go, oh, yep, that sounds like a good thing. <laughs> it takes a while to build a knowledge base. If you haven't curated that information, the chances are that you have a variety of different wikis, you have things that might be a file-based system, uh, you know, all sorts of different ways of accumulating insights, whether it would be a user guide or um, something that has pictures in it in terms of like how to take apart something. When was the best time to pull together a knowledge base? Maybe five years ago. When's the second best time? Probably today. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's something that really, I, if I think about
as being something fairly straightforward that people can get into pretty quickly, that that is a big one because it does impact, like you said, you use that as a basis for your generative AI. That's a way to maybe damp down any hallucinations, damp down any information that might be out on the web. You're curating your own universe of data and something that's searchable. I think it's, uh, and it's helpful for all sorts of things, whether it's conversational AI or chatbots or just some searchable web knowledge base inside of the customer extranet. Uh, this, those are all great examples. Uh, 